let's start with the engine. We're starting at 30 miles an hour in third, past 3,000. Start to edge in the pack of throwing the throttle. It's got loads of torque, 5,000, and it really builds to a crescendo. 145 brake horsepower, right at the top of the rev range, about 7,000. Just builds and builds and builds and builds. It's got a really exhilarating engine note to it as well. Pedals, pretty good. You can heel and toe, yeah, nice and easy. Gear shift is a bit of a long throw. Gear ratio is well chosen. You never need to stay underneath 5,000 if you don't want to. Now here we've got a bumpy section of road. It just shows how well the, uh, the MGF is, is damped and sprung, really, because it just deals with all the bumps beautifully and allows you to really play with the chassis in a neutral way. Yeah, all of the, there are some horrible bumps there. You barely felt them at all. Obviously, a big part of that is the hydrogas suspension system, which I'll go into in my other video. But it's also got dampers which control the rebound. And altogether, it just basically makes it unfallible, except if you hit a mid-corner bump right on the limit, the whole car does do a bit of a weird squirm and it doesn't feel very natural. But it still remains pretty much solid and it's not going to throw you off the road. It tends towards understeer for sure, this car. You really, really, really have to provoke it to get the tail out. Throttle response isn't the cleanest thing in the world. Brakes are good though, brakes are good and sharp, and all the weights of the controls are really nice too. Plenty of feel through the steering. Um, without power steering, it's a much better setup. But the other part about this car is that it's still enjoyable to drive if you take it a little bit calmer. The ride is really good actually, and you never forget that this is a mid-engined rear drive sports car. You just feed in the throttle, slightly lower revs, and there's torque, and it pushes you out in that kind of traditional sports car feel. It is very pleasant. Biggest criticism, yeah, it's got to be the seats. The seats position are sit too high, and the seat is too small, um, and it is actually... Whoa, oh, there you go. There's, the, there's a suspension dealing with a jump like it's nothing. It will just land and there is no upset at all. It will always find the right landing and that is an impressive thing actually. And when you do settle down for a cruise, you can appreciate how nice the interior is designed. It's got some character to it. I love the white dials for example the you know, curvature of the dashboard. It's all very nice piped leather seats or half leather here with funky 90s pattern fabric. And you can, you can short shift it to your heart's delight. You, know, you can cruise around at 1500 RPM all day long and it will pull and you know, it's, it's nice. And occasionally, if you want to touch the red line, you can. Um, it's a zingy engine. It's not got much, much, much of a bassy note but um, it's pleasant. It is maybe what you describe as a pretty car. Um, it's a shame though, when you're inside, actually you can't really see much of the bodywork. The, the bonnet slopes away from you and there's not much curvature in the rear view mirror. Outside it does look good. I mean, the whole reason you can't see much is because it's such a compact shape. And you look at the profile of the car and you realize, yeah, it's mid-engine, but there isn't this bulk and extended length or even the height at the rear to suggest any of that. Part of that is the compact hydrogas suspension. And also when you look at the back, the roof folds down into a little cavity on top of the engine. I think that's really clever. Nice little details. You've got a suggestion of MG heritage on the front with the grille. Uh, the round headlights and the rear taillights are all fairly unique. And that's the theme of the whole design of the car. It's all its own character. I think generally it's a really nicely proportioned car. And on this example, you've got the front fog lights and the, of course, Starfish BVC alloy wheels. Now we've already mentioned that it's a comfortable, refined car, but how does it stack up as a Tourer? 
Well, there's decent boot space. There's some space at the front and there's a decent sized boot as well as quite a few cubby holes in the interior. There's a glove box and a couple of panels in the center. So you could reasonably use it for a weekend or a long weekend away. And it will touch 40 miles to the gallon on a run. You won't even do much less than 30 miles to the gallon if you're pushing it hard. So that's a good 300 miles range. The MGF has its strengths. Oh, the engine never gets old. You find yourself doing that all the time. No, the way the way this car tackles a B road really is impressive. There's more than that. It's just enjoyable. It's lovely to have the roof down. It just feels right. It feels right as a sports car. Not only that, is it broadens the whole appeal. It's a great looking car. You find yourself looking back at it. And it's a car you can take over long distances as well. You can go and explore all the good roads of Scotland or Europe or wherever. And I think that's really important in a sports car. No, the MGF is multi-talented. So I really tried not to make any comparisons with a, a certain car based on a certain Lotus Elan. But the fact is, the MGF is its own thing. And it is a very good thing.